Hey folks, welcome into Indaba Africa. This is Chris once again, coming to you from central Pennsylvania. Uh, my special guest today is Dax Twafa, and um, right now uh, having a little bit of technical difficulty trying to get him in on the call. So until we get him in, let's just go ahead and get started and welcome everybody here who's uh, come in for today's session. Uh, hopefully uh, we'll get him in here in just a moment. Should be a good discussion. Uh, Dax is a uh, panel beater who uh, took his uh, artistic talents and decided to become an actually a painter and has been painting um, various different scenes and people and animals for some time now. And we're going to have him on here in just a second. Uh, one of his biggest outlets for selling his uh, paintings has been local fairs, which during the lockdown has been problematic for him as he's been unable to attend as all the fairs have been canceled during lockdown. As a consequence, uh, he's not had the ability to uh, sell his wares, and that's quite frustrating for him, no doubt. So anyway, just a moment. Hopefully we'll have him on here. We'll see uh, if we get him on the channel in just a moment. Hopefully he'll pop up. But at the moment, it's still just me in the conversation. So watching what's happening around the world, listening to uh, Kaylee McEnany this morning uh, talking uh, on the news about uh, President Trump's speeches and comments over the weekend. Uh, Trump using a bit of hyperbole, saying that 99 percent of those tested or th those who get the virus, it's harmless to. Of course, this is going to bring him all kinds of scorn from the not so scientific, but suddenly scientific science deniers on the left who will um, use this as ammunition against him. Really wish that the president wouldn't uh, engage in that kind of hyperbole. It doesn't really help the cause of um, what needs to be done to resolve these issues. But that is what's happening there. Hey, Luke, the lead singer. Good to see you there. Slinger, I said singer. <laughs> it's so easy to fall into that. Yeah, waiting for my guest to come in. Um, he is not here yet, and I'm not sure sure what the problem is. Okay. Um, I don't know. Let me see. This is uh, trying to find out where he's at now. Um, sorry about that. Anyway, back to sending a message very quickly just to see if uh, what's happening with his uh, with his feed there. Anyway, folks, uh, thank you so much for tuning in um, on a Monday. Uh, not the busiest of days, but uh, happy to get some folks on here to uh, watch the stream today to talk to what is going on with my computer sitting over here still playing long, long ads. Um, two minutes after I started the stream, two and a half minutes. It's four minutes of ads on there. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's my channel. <laughs> I guess that's what you get when you monetize things. Anyway, so um, events happening around the world, quite uh, quite a bit happening uh, here in the U.S. The usual nonsense is happening. Over the weekend, um, on the 4th of July, a bunch of malcontent, venal criminals who need to be arrested and prosecuted for their acts tore down a statue that belonged to the city of Baltimore of Columbus, Christopher Columbus, in Little Italy. No less insulting. Whatever happened to inclusion? Whatever happened to diversity? Whatever happened to uh, equality? Uh, Little Italy is a predominantly Italian neighborhood, historically in Baltimore, and they marched into Italy, Little Italy and tore down the statue of Columbus, which was dedicated by President Ronald Reagan, and then dumped it in the Inner Harbor. Round them up, fingerprint them, photograph them, detain them. If they can't make bail, incarcerate them. If they can make bail, make sure it's in reasonable conditions, and then schedule their trials. Simple as that, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you do with this sort of nonsense. You don't put up with it. It's not acceptable. Let me see. Got a response back here. Okay. Okay. Oh, shoot. I'm using... Oh, rookie, rookie, rookie stuff. Got the rookie on the other end, um, working through something. Um, Miscommunication should have been handled ahead of time. My apologies for that in the stream, but hopefully we can get Dax in here shortly. Um, very uh, frustrating. Um, oh, no wonder nobody's uh, floating around today. I see that Morning Shot is appropriating my time again. <laughs> okay, I guess that's become a regular thing for him now. Uh, I had this time, he decided to use it. <laughs> Yikes. Anyway, so back to where we're at. So, Anna, good to see you. Good afternoon. Uh, Good to see folks tuning in today. Um, we were just talking about the Christopher Columbus statue having been torn down in Baltimore, Maryland. This is the first of the nonsense we've seen in Baltimore. Uh, really um, un unfortunate that such lunacy is allowed to prevail. The law enforcement doesn't do its job. City officials don't protect public property, private property, and individuals. Really, really sad. Give them administrative punishment, Starship Troopers. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to know more? 
<laughs> I love that first movie. Uh, Robert Heinlein, yeah, the first the first Starship Troopers with Casper Van Diem was just <laughs> awesome. Really, really awesome. So, citizenship. <laughs> Would you like to know more? It's a bug planet. It's a... <laughs> that was a really, really good thing. So, anyway, still waiting here for my uh, guests to come in. Um, change a few things. But anyway, hopefully, just a moment... Yeah, I know that the first Starship Troopers movie is really good. They did three of them. Uh, the second also went to theaters, but third was direct to video. It didn't do particularly well. And of course, as you went through them, the cast uh, became less and less impressive. But uh, that first, uh, first, uh, first, uh, the those uh, Starship Troopers movies had Casper Van Dien. It had, um, had Doogie Howser in it. Uh, it had a whole bunch of uh, named actors, and it was quite uh, not top actors, but people whom we knew. It was quite good. Really, really good stuff. Enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, it was uh, something else. <laughs> yeah, people are streaming in here one by one, Yanni. A little bit slow attendance. Let me see what's going on with my guest. Um, how can I I'll cut my side? Oh, Jesus, you can't. How am I going to do this? How do I send it? Uh, oh, my goodness. My goodness, I don't understand. Why does he want to... Oh, here we go. There we go. Admit. There we go. All right. My guest should be coming on in just a moment now. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. And right now, my guest is not actually Linda. <laughs> it's actually Dax. But uh, he's using that phone. Just waiting for him to come on. You must turn on your phone. Um, you must join the audio there, Dax. Your audio is connecting. Okay, it's taking a bit of time here. All right. Where are we at there? Let's get this over. I'm not sure why it's taking so long to connect. Anyway, folks, yeah. So, hello, Lynn. Good to see you there. Welcome aboard. Yep. Um, okay. So, uh, for some reason, Dax's connection is taking far too long. Uh, I had this problem with someone else the other day. I don't know why they couldn't connect. Um, it wasn't the brew. The brew doesn't seem to have any difficulty. Let me see. Um, Zoom seems to be working well. Last few streams have not had issues. Yeah, no, it's working well, but uh, my guest is having problems on that end getting in. I don't know why. It says connecting to audio. You have to. You have to. You have to join the meeting with your audio. Okay, I think I've got. Okay, I've got audio, but not camera. You got to turn your camera on too. Dax? Hello. Hi, I hear cars. You've got to turn your camera on now or we can't see you. Go into the app and there should be a, a button at the bottom left hand side for the video. Hello. Your camera is not turned on, just your microphone. It's going to be hard to have a guest talking about art if we can't see the art. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, can you see me? Can you see me now? I can see you. There it is. Dax, welcome. Despite the little tag under the window, that's not Linda. That's actually Dax, ladies and gentlemen, just so we're not confused on gender here. Okay? Welcome, Dax. Thanks a lot. All right, let me get this a little bigger on the screen so people can see you better. Okay? Uh, there we go. A little bit bigger there. Come on. All right. And. Well, all right. We finally got you here. We sorted out the uh, the uh, video and the audio, folks. Sorry for the delay, uh, but now we have Dax on with us. Um, and you're in? Are you in Johannesburg right now? Or where are you at? I'm in Johannesburg. Yes, I'm in Johannesburg, South Africa, right now. Okay, Johannesburg. So, Dax, um, I've I've set up the uh, the description of the video and told people that you're an artist, uh, a painter, and that you've uh, been a panel beater in the past. Uh, today you're out. Um, uh, I don't, are you at a, at a hotel or some event somewhere to showcase your art, or did I misunderstand? Uh, come again. Uh, what was the question? I said that. Um, are you at a hotel or uh, some event, some venue to showcase your art, or, or are you at home? What's going on? I'm, I'm part of. Uh, um, is a hotel uh, around Johnsbank and Rosbank. Ros uh, so it's an initiative that we're pushing whereby we're creating an art hotel whereby if you come and visit, if you book in a hotel, 
get to uh, view the artworks from, from all over South Africa, different stars, different uh, artists. So it's going to be a travelers hotel. Yes. Art Travelers Hotel. Yes. Oh, is that the name of the hotel? The Travelers Hotel. Yes, yes. Okay, so, so the corridors, the corridors everywhere. There's going to be art everywhere. Should you be interested in the piece, you just have to ask them how much the price is negotiated. Okay, so if I understand correctly, um, your art is on display at the Travelers Hotel in Johannesburg. And from people visiting the hotel, if you see it on the walls and you find it appealing, you just uh, contact the front desk and, and they can help you to purchase the art. Excellent. So, uh, Dex, um, you were a panel beater for a really long time. Yes, I was. I, uh, I guess, I guess I, got, I got into the wrong field. But along the line, I got bored. I had to pursue my, my, my passion. And I must say, it wasn't a, it wasn't an easy journey. So you, but when you want to say a long time, I think you were a panel beater for like eighteen years or something like that. So it, it must have been interesting at some point, not just a job. And and I imagine you must have been quite good at it. I know that when 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 you come out and you see a dent in your car or someone runs into your vehicle, the first thing you're just like, I got to call the panel beaters. Well, I, I wouldn't say it was interesting. But uh, the, the, the paycheck was interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, fair enough. We all, we all need that paycheck to take care of our responsibilities and bills. Um, exactly. When we spoke before, uh, when we set up the, uh, the stream to do the interview today, I sp asked you about your background. And, and your, if I understand correctly, your father is Swati and your mother is Ndebele. Is that correct? Yes, yes, sir. So did, was there any, any confusion growing up between the different cultural norms and practices of the end of Bele and the Swati? They're a little bit different people. Well, um, even though, even though, even though they, they might be different, like the Bele and, and Swati, like they fall under the Nguni tribe. So the, the, the culture and everything are very, are very similar in the languages, you understand? Yes. So it wasn't that much of a, an obstacle, but then he and the the way differences is. No, for me it's always interesting to see Ndebele who come back to South Africa because of course the Ndebele are from South Africa originally and they just they moved up north uh, after the Mpikani. So it's nice to see uh, the Ndebele who come back to South Africa. So back to uh, your upbringing, did you grow up in South Africa or did you go back and forth between Zimbabwe and South Africa? Um, I, I, I was born in Swaziland, then uh, I, I went to school a bit in uh, Zimbabwe, and then I grew up in uh, South Africa. I've worked in Botswana, I've worked in Zambia, I've worked in Namibia. Wow. So, uh, and, what's, yeah. sorry? As a panel beater. Okay. As a panel beater. Okay. Oh, okay, you might have fixed my car. I had some panel work done in Botswana. <laughs> But uh, never, know. never know. Yeah. So uh, of those three of Namibia, Botswana and Zambia, which did you find the most interesting of those three countries? Um, Namibia, Namibia, because of the desert, I mean, the, 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 the landscape, everything is different, but she's very, very hot. And then there is so much malaria. But then I learned a lot because uh, the highlight of, of my stay there was meeting um, the Tamara Nama, the Nama people, and the, and, and the Himba people. The Tamara and the Nama, they are, they are, they are the descendants of the Khoisan, understand? So we do have some of them who are up those uh, cultural uh, norms. They, they still have their regalia that they wear on special occasions. Even though like uh, they, they normally live in a primitive life, um, nowadays they, they, they only put on that regalia for special occasions. So I was opportune to see uh, 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 like it, it, was, it was a traditional ceremony of the years. So I was so much fascinated. They were, they were exposed explaining to me, I mean, how they used to hunt, how they used to gather their nomadic uh, lifestyles and, and stuff is. No, the, uh, the photographs of the, the Nama and the Himba people the, in their traditional dress and traditional dances, it's always quite fascinating. So uh, where were you located at when you were around the, the Nama and Himba people? Where were you living and working? Um, in Katimamlilo, Kapruvi Strip. Yeah, well, that's way up so there. It, <laughs> It, it's it's very far from 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 the uh, 
their, their uh, uh, tribes land. But then, as I was said, I was very, very, very privileged because I was just so like a family. And then they, they, they could speak English and they explained so many things to me. No, I've never been to Caprivi. I've been just on the other side of it in Botswana over the Okavango Delta. I say over because I was flying over it in a helicopter and so <laughs> for several hours. But I've never actually, never actually been to the Caprivi. It, uh, I hear it's quite beautiful and lovely. Um, uh, maybe I'll get there someday. So you really like Namibia. Did you get to any of the rest of Namibia or just the Caprivi? Did you get around the rest of the country or no? Yes, I did. I did. I went to Venduk or the Venduk just for a short trip. Is, uh, but I won't say I know much about it, but then uh, when is No, when you mentioned you mentioned malaria, I was like, wait a second. Um, he's clearly not talking about uh, the bottom two thirds of Namibia. There's no malaria there. It's got to be up north somewhere. Anyway, so so uh, does does your experiences out there in places like Caprivi, did it influence your art? Do you draw anything? Do you do landscapes, wildlife, things like that? Nature? Is that part of your artwork? Yes, yes. Like I, I do have like a range of my art whereby like I depict um, animals, right? And then, cause cause I was born and bred up in the city, right? So I never had that encounter with wild animals. So I only saw saw them in um, Namibia. They were so fascinating. I saw them in um, I, actually uh, Botswana, the Kasane border is wanted to cross over to Namibia. We got there. Up the six and the border was closed and we marooned the there were so many like wild animals and slept there so it was an experience understand so in, in a way i feel like i feel like um wild animals in, in in as much as they are wild they're very cute so what i i, I always try to do is i try to uh paint them not in, in their original color because any person any check and chill can can paint in um, in, in, in their original state. So I like painting animals like um, a red rhino. Imagine a red rhino. Imagine like a blue elephant. Imagine like like those colorful animals, but then with the intricate details of the animals. So in a way, that is how I express myself, that um, the animals are very cute, but then like if they were to be colorful, that would be nicer. Easy. So, so it's a little bit different approach than a lot of folks. A lot of folks tend to stick to the natural colors, them, but you try something more interesting to make them more appealing. Do you do you also do you draw them out of proportion in any way, or do you draw them proportionally, or do you try to try to distinguish animals in any, any other way other than the color? Can I can I move my camera to one piece? Yeah, behind please, me? please do. Please show us. Please show us the artwork. That's why we're here. <laughs> Okay, can, can, oh, can you see this? I can see the rhino there in the middle. He looks kind of a roanish red color. And then is that a baby rhino mm -hmm. next to it? Yes, yes. Oh, so as you can see, the, the proportions and then the, 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 and, and everything, the shapes and everything, they are original. But what's, what's different is the colors. You understand? It might look easy, but then one thing is where there are shades, where the darker areas, I need to use darker colors, understand? So in a, in a way, it's changing, but it's very much interesting. Well, Docs, I will tell you that uh, when you say it may look easy, it doesn't look easy to me. I have absolutely no artistic talent whatsoever. I can't draw. I can't sing. Uh, I can write, so I suppose that's a bit of artistic flair, but but I cannot paint and I cannot draw. So uh, any anyone that has any talent quite impresses me. So none of that looks easy to me. Even if it was paint my numbers and I had an outline, I probably have a hard time accomplishing that. So it's quite impressive. So what, what made you uh, resort to using the, the different colors? Did you just want to be your signature trademark or is it something that was inspiring you? Well, I thought, I thought, I thought of expressing myself, right? right? Uh, that in as much as they are white, uh, they are very cute. So, and Africa is color, as you would know, with our traditional uh, regalia, we're having ceremonies and stuff. Is we, we moved from the animal skins and then went into our, our colors stand is with the different designs and stuff. For instance, this this one, this particular one here, this is a Ndebele cloth, Ndebele design. Yes, yes, yes. As, 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 as you would know, there is, there is a very famous Ndebele artist uh, who is well known worldwide. She does this kind of art. So 
Yeah, so I, I wanted to, to express uh, that Africa is color, Africa is beautiful, the wild animals are beautiful, let them be in color, yes. No, that's, that's amazing. So you also do people. I saw behind you there was a painting. It looked like someone on the left-hand side there. It looked like they were drinking something from a chalice. Um, what was that? What was that image? Just behind you. Uh, before I show you the okay. piece, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a Himba woman, right? It's a Himba woman from 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 Namibia, okay. and then it's a three it's a three D uh, uh, piece whereby like uh, I drew it and then. Uh, I put like I, I used soft leather, right, um, and then I used I uh, stuck it on, so it, so that so it gives us a three D effect. So when you paint it from a distance, you can see it coming out. And I juxtaposed they are they are somewhat primitive uh, life, right, with what's happening uh, in the modern day era. So she's sipping on a cocktail while she's very clad in a in a in a, in a traditional regalia. Yeah, so it's a contrast of the old and the new. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the piece now. Okay, I like that approach. It's very interesting. Is that a cocktail? It looks like a cocktail she's having. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a cocktail. So let's see. I can't see very clearly. Does she have a child on her back? Yes, yes, she has a child. On her back. Okay, all right. And this is pretty. As you can see, this is animal skin. This is soft leather, so it gives us a 3D effect. I love the I love the color schemes there. It's quite awesome, and also you you've made her the center of attention with the trees being in a distance there. That's pretty interesting. I also like the uh, the contrast between the uh, the traditional and the modern. Um, for a lot of folks, when we think about this, the first thing that comes to mind is a movie that came out back in the nineteen seventies. You may or may not have heard. You know it. The Gods Must Be Crazy, and so you think of the of, of the Bushman, the the Basara, the Sand Man, who uh, finds the Coke bottle and says, "I must return it." It's 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 quite humorous, but uh, you know it's interesting. I always always like that. That gentleman, the actor, is act was actually from Namibia. He passed away a few years ago, but he actually is from Namibia, and so um, <laughs> yeah, he was from Namibia. He's one of because of course Namibia has more Bushmen, more San than any country in the world, even more than Botswana. So it's about seventy five to ninety five thousand Bushmen live in uh, Namibia, and so he was actually from Namibia for that movie. So yeah, no, that that traditional that contrast between the traditional and the modern is. And, and, you know, it's interesting you do that, Dax, and I don't know if you do it with more of your art, but um, I don't know, something like maybe a herdsman out there at the cattle post or something like that with a mobile phone in their hand. That You know, that's that's very much a, a contrast between the traditional and the modern, isn't it? Yes, I've, I've actually uh, done that, John. If you, if you look up uh, about my stuff online, um, like the, the, the exhibition that, that I put partook in in um, Liverpool. I had I had a piece whereby there was a, a coisin hunter. He was hunting on a Harley Davidson. Understand? So the 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 the, 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 the depiction and the, the inspiration was even though the guy went to the city, made a fortune, and got himself a true to it. He still goes back home and but now he hunts on a Harley Davidson. So instead of instead of being celebrated in his native area, he's now in nuisance. Why? Because when he's around, people go hungry. You know the sound of a Harley. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. Animals run away. <laughs> he is, he is. So I've done I've done like also another one of that I did. I did one for for Blackberry back in the day when Blackberry was the thing. I I I, I contrasted two um question hunters. And as they were holding a, a blackberry, actually playing around with it, yes, yes. Well, clearly you don't need any ideas from me. You've already found all these ideas on your own. So <laughs> I like I like what you've done with them. Listen, I have a great deal of respect and admiration for the Koi and San people. It's uh, I find their their story fascinating, and um, actually, uh, as a university student, did research into the medical practices of the of the San people. Uh, but anyway, so you probably can't see it very well in the picture behind me, but in, in the frame behind me, just a moment here, um, on the far side there, I've got uh, an ostrich belt from uh, from the San people in Botswana. Um, so I, I, uh, they have they do some wonderful art of their own artwork of their own, and that's one of course you wear, wear around your waist. It's it's lovely, but uh, yeah, no, the the San are fascinating topics. There's some interesting comments coming in here, Dax. Let me just share those with you for just a moment. So Bosch Zebra says, Dax, well done. Must say your art is a personal and unique expression. Thanks for presenting this to us. And he put a little emoji of a rhino and a thumbs up there. That's kind of cool. And then uh, Stronger Together says, good job, Dax, brother, proudly South African. 
And uh, then says uh, Khoisan. Love it. I misspelled Khoisan, though there's an H in there. But <laughs> anyway, so um, so you've been doing uh, painting how long now? And, and if you've been doing it for many years, okay, but when did it become your job as such? What, that your, your, what's your passions? Because you stopped, did you stop doing panel beating, yes? Um, I started um, doing this full time. Uh, that was 2013. 2013, yes. Okay, so for, so for seven years, that's been your profession is, is being a professional painter. Cool. Yes. And, um, yes. So let's talk before the, the pandemic and the lockdown. What were some of the challenges about being this? I mean, I mean, it had to be a little scary to just like, you know, stop doing your job and having an income and, and saying, okay, I'm going to take a chance now. And hopefully somebody will buy my art. Um, was, was, that, was that stressful or, or were you like, ah, I can do this? Well, um, the pandemic devastated everything. Like, I mean, everything took a nose dive because uh, no, 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 I used Dex, to... Dex, let's, let's hold off on that. I want to go back to when you first got into it. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about the pandemic in a moment. But let's go back to when you, you stopped panel beating in 2013. You decided, I'm going to paint. It's my full-time mm -hmm. job. I mean, you know, a lot, that's a big risk, you know, people, people don't just go, oh, you know what, I'm going to become an astronaut tomorrow. I'm going to become this. You, you, if you have a, if you have a wage and you have responsibilities and you're not, you know, 18, it's difficult to make that change, isn't it? So, so I'm going back to when you, when you switch from being a panel beater to being an artist full time, was that, was that stressful? Did you, you're like, oh gosh, I hope I can feed my family. I hope I can make money. Or were you like, I got this. I'm t I can make this. It'll work. Well, in a nutshell, um, I, I would say I would never advise anyone to do what I did because I suck. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so, so it didn't go smoothly, I guess, at the beginning. The transition was very hard because initially what I used to draw did not appeal to people. Understand? There's a difference between uh, having a talent to draw and paint and uh, painting and drawing what people like, what sells. I understand? No, I got you. There's, there's, I, very, I, I, there's I, a distinction between making something that's amazing. It doesn't mean people will buy it. You can be the most talented person in the world. It doesn't mean people are going to buy You got to buy what they're interested in or, or make what they're interested in. It's true. That is true. So like uh, the, the first the first uh, 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 year to uh, roughly first 18 months, it was very tough. I couldn't even afford uh, my rent, right? I lost everything. Good people, um, like when, when things are going uh, haywire, the first thing that they tell you is, why did you leave your job? Understand? Why did you leave your job? Go back to your job. But then I, I, I had people, uh, other artists that, that I was looking up. But I, the inspiration that, that I had uh, from from them, then I soldiered on, and then two years later, yes, I, I think I found my feet. Yes, so uh, from there it was smooth sailing, and I started uh, making way more than I would have made in, in the panel beating industry. Yes, and then and then obviously the uh, choose ch changed. People started complimenting. Yes, the very same people that. Uh, taking our jabs and so some of that broke up because of the the network connection but let me just uh, make sure we, we capture some of the deck so um, the first the first uh 18 months were very difficult to transition and then about two years in you, you found your sweet spot and you found what was working for you and eventually you say you're able to make much more money um from from your living as, as a painter than and an artist than you were as a panel beater so that's some good news all right um but then of course 2020 arrives and uh, it comes in on a good note with the Springboks as the world champion, rugby world cup champions. And then 2020 gets here after that wonderful news and exciting stuff. I'm a Springbok fan in case you didn't know that, but uh, we get to 2020 and then this, this nonsense happens. But before, before you get to this, bef let's, before we talk about the 2020 story, well, let me ask you. So before you got to this year, how are you selling your art? Do you have a website? Were you going to hotels? Were you going to fairs? What was the way that people became aware of your art and they could purchase it? I don't know. I don't know if if, if you guys have them uh, over there, but then uh, it's like we have art and craft markets whereby, like, uh, we 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 converge maybe at, at a mall by 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 
by the parking lots and people come from all uh, different uh, spheres. They come, they, they browse, they buy African art. And our, our clientele is, uh, is uh, very much um, a positive. Eh? Our clientele is um, uh, tourists, people coming from all over the world to, to buy. So yes, that, that, that was my main source of income. So, yeah, we do have a similar sort of thing here in the States, especially in the major cities where uh, you'll have craft markets and art markets where people get together, particularly on weekends, like on a Saturday and Sunday. That's usually the big time for that sort of thing. I imagine it's the same for you. Is that mostly when you it's mostly on the weekends that this happens? Yes. yes, yes. Okay. So Saturdays, Saturdays uh, I go to um, uh, Pretoria and Sundays, the Ross Bank is during the week. Okay. Yes. So uh, from those, have you, have you ever appeared like on, on television or on radio? Has anyone ever interviewed you for something like that and taken interest in your art? Yes, I've had, I've had, I've had a couple of uh, interviews, like um, not TV per se, but um, on, on print media. And another thing that I forgot to tell you, I'm also a poet. So I've been on TV um, um, reciting my, my, my poems. I, I've, I've won a national award for my poetry. Oh, yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I'm multi-talented. <laughs> well, I guess so. You have multifaceted talents there. That's interesting. So interesting. So uh, when you were in Zambia, where did you, were you in Lusaka or somewhere else? Sesheke, Sesheke, just just by the border of of, of Zambia, next to, next to Namibia, between between uh, Zambia and Namibia. And uh, you also you said you lived in Botswana. Where were you at in Botswana? Uh, in Francis Town. Francis oh, okay. Town. Francis Town. Okay. All right. So so all of that was really from the middle of Botswana up. That kind of in that one little square spot there, the Caprivi. And over, yeah, okay, so interesting. Uh, so how did you find Francistown? I've been to Francistown many times. To me, it's kind of like, a, it's like a business center mining town. It's okay, it's got some nice restaurants, but it's, you know, it's okay. I think I think I have the same sentiments. I mean, I don't think there isn't much to write home about. It's, it's just, <laughs> just okay. <laughs> I think we're both being diplomatic. It's, it's not much to write home about, yeah. Whereas the other parts of the country, I mean, Maun is a tiny little town. I don't know if you've been there, but um, but it has character. It's interesting. and it also has a wide variety of people there, too. You've got... You've got the Herrera who lived there, who fled from the conflict a century ago and moved into Botswana and, and settled around Maun. You've got other folks up there. You've got the San. It's a lot, a lot of um, white Botswana live there because they, they work in the tourism industry. So you have quite a mix for such a small town um, of, of Maun. So have you been to Maun or no? Um, uh, I haven't been to Maun, but then like I, I went on the on the road that uh, that takes me to to to, to Maun. Is it isn't when you go to Maun? Uh, you have to um, take a ride at Nata. So I was going to Kasane, right? By by Nata, people were were, were going to Maun, were taking a ride to head towards Maun. So I know I have, a, I have a sense of direction where it is, but I never got to. It. I passed by Nata on, on my way to Kasane. No, no, I recognize it's... Nata. I've been there. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but how did you find the people in Botswana? I, I find them to be quite. Um... Quite interesting and friendly, uh, although that's not the impression everybody has of them. That's why I ask your thoughts. Well, um, I think I think uh, they, 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 they are so condescending to 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 fellow black people who are not from 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 uh, um, um, Botswana. Mm -hmm. Understand? That's one as that's one as uh, like they they they're very much a, 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 a unity because. They, 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 they speak more or less one language, right? The, the dialects, even though they might be different, but then they all fall under Sitsuana, understand? So if you come there, if you don't know the language, obviously they'll treat you in some type of way. But then generally, I, 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 I would not say that the, 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 the population, the populace is, 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 is hostile or something. No, they're very friendly. They're very friendly. I um, mean, and they, they, they believe in uh, uh, cake. They believe in cake. They believe in, they like, the people, like, when someone is rich, he has to have more than 100 cake, understand? So unlike unlike the other countries whereby there is so much um, 
uh, development and start people, people, people are on businesses in South Africa, people on businesses. You know, it's interesting. It's interesting that you them, if, they, if, they, if, they, if they look up to is they, no, no, not a problem, no, not a problem. No, the signal is breaking up, so I thought you had stopped. Sorry, <laughs> go ahead and continue. <laughs> no, I was, just, I was just trying to contrast the two, like oh. the, 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 kind of, the kind of wealth from the compared to other countries. It's a bit different. And 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 if, if, even in the city, you find like cakes are running around. So it was a bit different, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, Dax, I would have to say thank you for those, those those points because that's points I usually make to folks who go to Botswana. So it's interesting for me because um, when I started uh, traveling extensively in Africa a few decades ago, in West Africa, as, as, as a, uh, a, a light-skinned um, of European descent kind of person, I guess they call us white, I'm not really sure, but anyway, as a light-skinned person who didn't have much of a tan, uh, in West Africa, in the French-speaking part, the Francophone countries, there was still this practice of people just having grown up and naturally giving deference. And so people would always, whether it was genuine or it was just to get your attention to get money, but it's always patron, 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 which means, you know, boss. Um, uh, or or yes. in other places they say chef, 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 you know, for, for boss. And in South Africa, mm -hmm. even at that time, I would go to South Africa and a lot of black South Africans would be always like boss, boss, boss from Afrikaans. And I, I, I didn't really like that. I wasn't comfortable with that sort of thing. And I contrasted that with Botswana and, and, and people ask me what's Botswana like and I, I tell them two things. I said, well, it's a lot like Arizona with a lot fewer white folks, but you know, it's like Arizona, the same climate, um, law and order reigns. Um, it's, it's a country that works. I said, but the other thing about Botswana is that what's interesting about Botswana and, and it's interesting that you mentioned this, Dax, because um, I don't want to mischaracterize it. So tell me if I got it wrong, but the way you described it is, is kind of the way I describe the Botswana to people, other black Africans. And what I mean is that so like in Ethiopia, people ask me all the time about Botswana. And I said, well, the thing about Botswana is that, you know, the country was never really colonized as such. It was just a protectorate. So the chiefs approached the British because they were worried about incursions from the truck boards and people coming into the land. So they made it a protectorate and that was it. And it was so unimportant to the Brits that they didn't even run it from, from, from Bechuana land, which was Botswana. They ran it from Mafeking in South Africa. That's where the administrative headquarters was, not even in the country. So unimportant. And as a consequence, the people in Botswana continue to develop politically, culturally, and socially largely on their own with very little interference from colonial authorities. And so a lot of Botswana, unlike other parts of the continent where some people feel wrongly that there, there should be deference to others or that, you know, that they, they have to look up to other people, in Botswana, they, don't, they, don't, they look at you, whether you're white or you're black, if you're not a Botswana, and not only do they not think that, that I'm better than they are, they actually think they're better than I am, and they think they're better than you are. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> That's so true, right? Not, well, both of us are laughing because we don't mean this in a malicious way, but I mean, honestly, right? I mean, the, the, the Botswana, they, they, don't, they don't take any nonsense. You know, hey, I, I'm, I'm a Motswana, a Ke Motswana, and, you know, if you're not a Motswana, then that's just your thing. But this is Botswana. Get in line. Get in line. <laughs> Yes, that is true. That is true. And remember, remember, uh, this one is very rich. They've got diamonds, and uh, the, the the currency is stronger than the rand. So they they they, they, they don't beg. <laughs> no, they do not beg. They do not. In fact, you know, the country did quite a quite a good job surviving the global downturn in two thousand eight. Uh, you know, it's interesting because unlike uh, my government, which instead of making people redundant and and uh, delaying capital projects, you know, if we had buildings that had to be constructed. Instead of waiting to build them after the tax revenue came back, we just borrowed money and kept building. Whereas in Botswana, they retrenched workers who weren't necessary to cut salaries, the government expenses. They, they uh, also delayed construction projects like their staff college for the military was supposed to be built. And they said, nope, not this year. <laughs> this is a bad economic time. They delayed it for two years until the money came back into the treasury. Very smart people. They, they're very focused on what's right. But, but they... You don't have to worry about them thinking they're inferior to anyone because they, they don't think they're inferior to anyone, that's for sure. Why well, true, true, true that. <laughs> so did you, true before, before you left the panel beating business, I imagine you were probably doing paintings just for your own pleasure and, 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 and practice before you ever did it. You didn't just like one day go, you know what, I'm going to be a painter. Okay, I'm not a panel beater, I'm just going to paint. So you must have been doing this throughout your life or, or am I wrong? No, you're, you're very much right. Like I used to, I used to paint, draw and paint during my spare time. 
and then um, people would buy here and there, people would buy here and there, and um, that that actually uh, inspired me to, to actually take it up uh, as a, as a career. But I, I think I think I went in full time too soon, way too soon. I had little knowledge about about how to meander the whole thing. Understand? So hence I had so many so many regrets here and there. Like I had, uh, uh, lessons that I learned along the way. But yeah, yeah, I'm here today. <laughs> No, absolutely. Come quite a ways. Uh, as I said, I think it's very impressive to take that big leap, to take that challenge where you had a job that may not have been a job you really enjoyed or it may not have been a job that paid you a princely sum, but you had stability. You had that and you took a risk. And wow. And you weren't exactly, you know, 18 or 19 when you took that risk. You were already into life as an adult. That's that's something a lot of people aren't willing to do. I mean, that's, that's uh, so bravo to you for doing it. It's quite a challenge. Now, for me, uh, I don't have a choice. By law, I had to retire from the Army, so I have to go do something else, whether I want to or not. You can only stay so long. So uh, they've, uh, they've sent me uh, off uh, into the wilderness to go do something else, and, and I'm doing that now. But uh, it won't be painting because I sure don't have that talent. Now, you had, another, you, had, you had another piece of art there on the right. Are we going to talk about that one to the right of the rhino? Okay. Uh, is it visible to you? Yeah, that one right there. What is that? People playing uh, trumpets in a band or something and a clarinet? Can't see. Yes. Okay. Those are, those are, um, that's a band. So with this particular piece, what I had in mind, I I, I was having a, a very dull day, right? And then I painted black. Then I thought, like, from this dull day, how can I incorporate colors? And then I thought of, like, um, a bus scene, I thought of a concert whereby it's dark, but then there are lights coming uh, out from everywhere and yeah, guys playing. So then, then the thing, this is what came out. Can you tilt the camera down just slightly? Cause we're only seeing half of the painting. Okay, that's a little bit, right. thank you. Okay, excellent. All right, thanks, I appreciate that. So uh, along those lines, that's an interesting piece there too. Um, I have to say that while I'm partial to rhinos and I really love the rhino painting, the the one of the himba lady is just amazing that's just that one really grabs my attention although i, I have to say that the, the mixing of the modern with with the with the um with the sex in the city um i don't know what she's drinking there the the the, the cocktail there the manhattan the manhattan that kind of threw me off but but i really the himba ones really they're all amazing dax but i really like that one especially so during lockdown okay let's jump forward now to 2020 you're doing you're doing well, I imagine, with your business and it's and people are buying your art and um, obviously you're doing all right. And 2020 comes and the main source of your income, I would imagine, would be from these fairs and expositions. And suddenly, boom, nobody can leave their house. This has got to have been a problem for you. It has been a major blow for me. It has been a major blow. I mean, like everything went blank and and PT, there was no forewarning sign. We knew about coronavirus. We could see people getting infect, infected in China and everywhere. But then we never thought that that was going to come to our shores. And when it first came through with a lockdown of 21 days, everyone was thinking after 21 days, back to business, back to our lives. But unfortunately, more than 100 days later, uh, the pandemic is still there, no income coming in, things are very tight. So, so during this time, right. so during this time, um, obviously you couldn't go anywhere to sell your art. But, but is it available online somewhere? Or do you sell it through something online so that people could buy it? Yes, yes. Um, I've, I, I do have, I do have uh, my, my, my Instagram page. I do have my uh, Facebook page. Right, Dax Twala Arts. They, they can look me up. Yes, so you can always purchase online, and I can show you some of the artworks that I've been uh, busy with through uh, throughout the lockdown. Okay, sure. right. Let's let's do that. But before we do that, um, make sure that afterwards you send me the uh, all the links for all the sites. Okay, I know we I think we've mentioned one of them, but I want to make sure I put it in the description for the video so that people know where to go to find you, whether it's Facebook or Instagram. Or and now now if people want to buy your art, um, how how can they do that online? Do you have it? Is it online or can you use PayPal or Zapper or something like that? Yes, they can use PayPal. They can use PayPal as well. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, go ahead and show me the stuff you're going to show me there. Sorry. All right. Uh, this is like part of the colorful ones. Can you see? Uh, go slightly back towards where your fingers are, just a little bit. There you go. Now I can see it perfectly. Yeah, it was just it was partly out of frame. 
Yeah, I can see that. It's elephants. Uh, elephants, my favorite creature. I love elephants. Colorful, mm -hmm. so I had, I had to uh, add color to, to, to bring them out. Mm -hmm. I've, got, I've got this one. I don't know if it's, it's an ostrich. <laughs> well, <laughs> I love that one. It's just his long, skinny neck and his annoying. You know, ostriches are mean, and that, that, that strikes me as a mean ostrich. Exactly. You can, you can see the attitude. <laughs> yeah, he looks mean. I, like he just wants to hit somebody. <laughs> oh, we've lost. Can you see? Uh, no, we had a freeze in there for a moment. Oh, oh is that a, ra a rabbit? It looks like a bunny rabbit. It's a bunny rabbit. Uh, I love it. That's cool. What, what, why does he have spots? Uh, it's f kind of far away from the camera, so I can't tell what the spots are. Are those uh, coins or something? No, 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 no just spots. Oh, okay, uh, okay, using, uh, okay. Now I can see a lot better. Okay, that's awesome, man. That, now that's a happy bunny. I like that much better than your mean ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got my all-time all -time favorite. Oh, that's awesome. Looks kind of kind of yeah. melancholy, kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I really so... like the mix of colors. I mean, that's very original to take the colors like that. I mean, that's not at all what what a creature like that looks like, but you've 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 made it look quite colorful. That's beautiful. Exactly. And then and then what what I had in my mind when I did this one, I called this one uh, Big Brother. Why? Because when you hang it on the wall, right, it actually watches you from whatever angle that you're coming from. Uh, in, in, in your room, ah. it's gonna be gazing. Yes. That's clever. So it's, it's like those paintings where the eyes follow you around the room. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I just wanna, I just wanna, I just, I just wanna show you like uh, the next room where like I do have some other paintings and and my team yeah 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 the hotel. Uh -huh. if, if if it's fine by you. Yo, that's please go ahead. Please do. Yes, absolutely. Got some other folks jumping in. Sloth Puppy says, can you spot the bunny? Um, Ranger Jake says, Dax, well done. You're very talented. Uh, and then uh, Herr Janse von Rensberg says, good evening, Chris and Dax. Just joining after work. You know, I think I might have to start switching the time for my show because some South Africans have gone back to work. I might have to start doing this at 6 p.m. just to make sure people have a chance to watch the program. Okay, I've got I've got Mr. Dlamini. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Chris. Hey, Mr. Is it Mr. Dlamini? Like in the Dlamini Zuma? Yeah. How are you doing? It's Pleasure. How's it? I'm good in yourself. Um, um I'm okay. Uh, getting a little um tired, uh, as they say in South Africa, hot full of the uh, lockdown. Uh, I'm sure you are as well. <laughs> hey, um, masks. All the time. You, you look, you look yeah, like that guy. I'm, you look like that character on Batman, the one that, that has that deep voice and talks like this in the Batman movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, here we are trying to survive. Yep. Fighting to be alive and to have something to eat. <laughs> Yeah, no, no doubt. It's uh, it's it's got to be um, it's got to be frustrating and challenging. So, uh, Mr. Dalmini, are you are you from the hotel or or, or I, I don't understand. Uh... I'm I'm uh, with the art tribe. We oh, okay, okay. Oh, I gotcha. established the art tribe. Look at that. Look at that. Ah, well, thank you for sharing that. Excellent. Okay, so our tribe. So, is this an association or a group that that um, helps um, demonstrate or show artwork from artists? Yeah, can you see that? I can see that. Art Tribe collection, curation, fine artist, um, exhibitions. Okay, excellent. So it's like an association, a professional association. What we've done is we are putting this that would work with in collaboration with artists in um, ensuring that their art is marketed, we are putting together one of the largest galleries yet, where there's a collaboration of different artists at the same time. Okay. Work with various artists at the same time. So we're gonna collect, if I'll show you now, the inspiration we got from Nike Gallery in 
Nigeria, uh, which you would see here, is what we're putting together. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, we can see it. The photographs on the wall there. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, there's like hundreds in photos in one gallery. Yes. Which is like the Nike gallery in Nigeria. So, so Mr. So, Mr. Dalimimi, let me ask you this question very quickly. Yeah. So since you obviously you're working with a lot of these different artists like Dax, um, in this lockdown period, uh, I imagine it's been very difficult for most of them to to get by to survive. Uh, with yep. artwork, uh, and, but they're still painting. I would imagine they're still trying to paint and such. So, are you seeing any changes in the way that artists are doing their painting? Is there anyone focusing on the lockdown, or do you? Think, I mean, because it's not the brightest of times. It's kind of a dark time, and a lot of times that sort of thing shows up in art. Are you seeing this already, or or no? We we are seeing the the, the struggle. For artists, for instance, um, even Rose Kamoto, who's one of the artists, is involved in a, a market at the Rosebank Market Sundays. That's her artwork there. Oh, and I love what that. She... I love that, especially the one on the right, just above your head. The lady, uh, yeah. no, the other side, yeah. the other side that yeah. last one there, right there. That, that one's amazing. These. Yeah, she also does these right behind me here. This is oh, all her I love, work. I love that too. That so, would make that would be a great thing, like for a book cover. Excuse me, a book cover yeah. or something like that. That would be beautiful artwork for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she was giving me feedback because the market just returned last Sunday, and she told me that you know we had helped because we took some of her images at cost. Uh, just to keep her up alive, you know, just for her to buy a few groceries and stuff. And um, she was saying the market was really quiet uh, because people are still scared, you know. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't get the feet, so they're not even sure if they're going to continue, you know, being there because they're not getting returned for, for being there, you know. Yeah. So it is a, a, a tough time for artists. Um, and we are trying because business has been open. Hotels and business people are allowed to 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 do business. Um, we are trying to uh, set up as fast as possible so that business people can consume art. You know, uh, as far as South Africa is concerned, artists will probably go back. They markets are going to go back around level one and we don't know when that is it's crazy nobody knows when that is. so mr Dalami, yeah. there's a so there's a, there's we a basically I'm sorry you know that it's fine no it's because there was a breakup in the signal so again i thought you'd finished uh but um there's a comment uh from someone one of the viewers uh tercia says that uh, she belongs to sa art initiative sartan a group on Facebook supporting South African artists on social media. It's open to all South African artists. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's a, there's probably a lot of Facebook groups, but it's called Sartan, South Africa Art Initiative. Is that something um, you know of? I'm, it sounds familiar, okay. but I'm not so certain what they, how they help. Because um, of, obviously with some of the artists we work with, uh, they probably haven't uh, known about that one. Yeah. And... Perhaps we need to share information. Absolutely. And that's, get to that's what I was going to suggest. Yeah. What I will do is I will share that with Dax on, on WhatsApp. Yes, so he's got please. it. And you guys can take a look at it and see if it's something that's helpful yeah. or useful. It never, it never har It's never harmful to network and, and find out things. Uh, it might be helpful. It might not be. But you only find out by checking, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, true, true, true. And we might be there for each other and uh, the future might be greener. Then it looks now. It's quite very bleak and uncertain. Yeah, that's the word I was going to use. I would, I should think that um, you know, from when this thing started, from the outset, um, before South Africa, South Africa went into lockdown two days before. Well, actually, it turned out to be just one day before we went into lockdown here in this county in Pennsylvania. Because mm -hmm. we have a federal system, so the country was never locked down. It's it's up to the states and local officials to do it. So my state yeah. um, had a lot of cases. When I say a lot, it means nothing now, but about 14,000 cases around, <laughs> Phil around Philadelphia, which is about two hours east of here. So we didn't have the lockdown for the first 
two weeks or so. But then they put a lockdown on this county, and that was one day after South Africa went on it. So we've been we've been with you in this experience, but it's not nearly been as draconian as what you're what you're suffering under. But uh, from the moment that yep. the lockdown started, I, I warned people of so many things: uh, mental health, uh, suicides, um, isolation, social loneliness, that yep. sort of thing. And then also the things that people never talk about. Um, and maybe I, I don't know if this is reflected in art. I, maybe I hope it's not. But but. Um, you get people who are not accustomed to spending 24 hours a day, seven days a week with their loved ones. And while you love your loved ones, yeah. you can only take so much of your loved ones, right? I mean, being locked down That's together, cool. that becomes a bit of tension. So, so we've seen all kinds of social ills from that as well. Uh, so it, it, I've, I've personally, yes, I've personally um, almost witnessed somebody who suffered mentally uh, in the hotel. That's, that's how worse it is. We had, Somebody had to be evacuated because they were going insane. They were screaming out the window and all that. Mm. So there was drama here. At one time, a lady uh, sort of lost her mind because we assume it's the isolation that was so hard on her. That's the assumption. And, you know, she almost, I, I don't know what's happening with her now, but she did go nuts about her situation. Yeah. And she was evacuated with the assistance of the police as well. Now, it's got to be a very odd situation because as homo sapiens, as human beings, we're very social creatures. Whether, you know, a lot of people say I'm fine by myself. But yeah, that's but that's just to a point. We, yeah. We're very social uh, as yeah. people. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. <clears throat> just like elephants. Elephants are very social creatures. They they form bands, they form bonds and, 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 they, and they, they travel together. And humans are the same way. And when you, you're isolated for such a long time. And I imagine that uh, for artists, uh, there's got to be some artists who unfortunately are probably isolated by themselves and probably painting. And uh, uh, we're likely to see that appear in their art, see that isolation, whether it's themselves or someone else they're painting. Uh, have you seen any of that yep. yet or do you expect to see it? No, we have because um, as, as, as we speak, we, we've got artists that are working on comical art that have, we've, I've just seen recent artwork that was done here. Uh, they brought it in, and uh, uh, they're still busy with that. They are illustrating the the, the stress and the anxiety and all that. Um, there's you see on their artwork. There's a lot of masks on the on the on the cartooning, etc. And they're putting they they're featuring both the political and the health situation in the same picture sort of so i don't know it seems to be to them that there is there has been limelight on how the political sphere has reacted at this time and all that but they, they there is a lot of artwork going on around those two things and and how it's featured in the recent time no i think that's fascinating it's it's unfortunate that we're dealing with this but um it's 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 interesting to note that that people are documented in some way, whether it's you know you know physical yep. documents or through the arts. Um, I'm sure we'll yep. see it in music. I haven't really seen it appear in music yet because people have, aren't releasing albums, but but I suspect we'll see yeah. it in music as well as we get further along. And, and it should be coming. It should be. Yeah, it should be coming. Um, and I, I'm, I hope I'm, this nonsense. I'm, I'm actually, Sorry. I was, I was saying I'm actually now um, waiting for or even thinking an artist should come with soon with um, what you call graffiti on walls uh, and, and stuff like that, you know? It's, it's murals, murals. murals We're yes. probably gonna see a lot of murals coming up soon. Well, that's, that's definitely, I, I, people are, are, are tempted to say that's an African thing, but that's a very human thing. We see that here in the US, yeah. we see it in Africa. It's, and it's across all ethnicities. You find people that, that resort to murals. And, and uh, if, it's, mm. if it's your building, you're probably not so happy about it in many cases. But, <laughs> but oftentimes, well, it's quite creative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so, were going to say something I missed. No, no, Sorry. no, it's, it's fine. It's, I was just going to, uh, what I say is that um, what I'd like to do is make sure that I capture information about, you, about the organization you've got there. I'll get that from Dax so we make sure we share that yes. with folks as well. Um, listen, I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, as I've told Dax, I have no talent. I can't draw. I can't, I can't paint. Um, that's, <laughs> that's all beyond my capacity. So I do appreciate it, uh, a lot when others have the ability okay. to do that. 
And, and I really, really um, in many ways personally distressed about what's happening around the world, but especially in South Africa with the lockdown and what it's done to people and yeah. what it's done to incomes. And, and it, it wasn't the best yeah. of times economically in South Africa before the lockdown. Now it's just yeah. horrific. So anything we can do to help support or get the word out about folks, I'm happy to do that. So uh, I'll share okay. that on my channel and I'll talk about it. If you would like, sure. uh, I'll make this offer to you. If you would like, if uh, I can promote your organization, let me learn a little bit more about it. But yeah. if, I, if I'm comfortable, yeah. which I'm sure I probably will be, then uh, on my That's streams, good. I'll promote it. What I do is for businesses and, and activities in South Africa, I just do a little bit of free advertising. I just put it on my channel oh, and wow. talk about it during my live streams so that people become aware awesome. of it. So if you're okay with that, yeah. just uh, we'll touch base. You can get my number from Dax. Mm -hmm. You can reach me on WhatsApp mm -hmm. and then um, awesome. share me some of that stuff and, and I'll try to help you out, okay? Awesome. Yes, Dax. Okay, thanks a lot, Mr. Delimi. Pleasure talking to you. All right, we got Dax back. No more mask. No more Batman scene here. We got we got Dax back. No more mask. Hey, Dax, before we get started, I've got a question for you here. Ranger Jake said, Dax, what do you use for reference? Meaning, do you work from photos or just off the top of your head? Um, usually what happens, like, for instance, I'm going to show you one painting. Um, can you see this thing? Is it visible? I can see it. It's a lion, yes. Yes. So I had a photo. I had a real, real photo of a lion. And then that's where I put the... the, 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 the okay. So in that, case, in that case, you used a photo and, and, and to, to, to draw inspiration from. Okay, cool. Cool. Yes. But then, but then, but then uh, it, it was a normal photo of a lion. The natural colors. So, but then I had to play around with my colors just to just just to show my innovation and stuff. You understand? I do understand. Now, I saw one of the photos that um, I think that Talon sent me that um, you did like the cityscape, uh, like with with um, combis, in it was in Johannesburg or something like that. Is that is that part mm -hmm. of what you do as well? Because none of these paintings are really that sort of scene. Um, yes, I also, I also, I also do that. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I do not have um, a piece with me right now. I, I do, I do like uh, uh, sometimes uh, paint uh, landscapes, like that is cityscapes, Johannesburg, like the main features of Johannesburg. Um, like say, for instance, uh, on a rainy day, Johannesburg on a rainy day, I would include the infamous Texas. I don't know if you still remember the Texas of Johannesburg, uh, the Toyota Quantums that. Uh, the drivers are so, are so, are so, are so, are so unruly in, in their bosses of the road. They drive as they please. So I, I like incorporating those texts, the bustle of people going up and down, uh, the tall buildings, the porty, the, 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 the telecom tower, and the stand years. And, and when it comes to township scenes, I like uh, painting um, squatter camps, like uh, squatter camps, but then I, I paint them in color to show that even though those people are living in dire conditions, they're very happy, there's so much happiness, kids are playing, and they're very much entrepreneurial, because in the township, uh, they, they, they might be living in shacks, in tin shacks, but there's always a, a spaza shop, which is like a tuck shop, and a corner shop, there's always like a beer tavern, there's always like a mechanic, I mean, people are industrious, I understand. Yes, yes. No, it's, it's uh, now very quickly, uh, Dex, because you said a spaza shop, it's like a tuck shop. I got to share with you, people outside Southern Africa don't know what a tuck shop is either. Uh, they, they probably don't know what a spaza shop is, but they don't know. I know what both are, but just for my audience outside of, of Africa, a tuck shop is a little side, you know, a little side shop where people can buy drinks and uh, little snacks and stuff like that. Maybe school supplies at, at a spaza shop, that sort of thing. Just a little in, informal kind of market there. Um, so <laughs> people are familiar with that. So Pinar von Weich has just joined us. Says, "How is it, Dumelang, uh, Dumela Pinar? How are you?" So uh, welcome aboard. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's interesting. Um, and uh, I have this question for you: Have you ever thought, or could you, um, like, could you like paint, um, you know, Sia Khaleesi and Herschel Yankees and Dwayne Vermeulen in their Springboks jersey? Is that something you do, or could you do something like that? Um, I won't do that. I won't do that. I won't do that. What I, what I did before, uh, I painted a rugby player. I, I avoided painting a specific rugby player, player. So I painted a guy who was putting on a rugby uniform, right? He was trying to, he was passing that rugby ball to a Yimba woman. Understand? So I tried to contrast oh, the yeah. old and the new. I see. That's <laughs> cool. That's cool. That's cool. And, and I just want to say, 
thank you to the person who bought it. Like, cause I, one thing about me, I believe, I believe in, um, uh, in building relationships with my customers. So I try very hard to, to follow up on my customers. I can even buy from me. Yes, yes. So um, very quickly, does um, so so can someone a customer like commission a, an art a, a piece and say I would like this and and you work it out with an agreed price and then you make it and then they buy it from you is that something you do? Yes, yes. Even even people are abroad. I can always Korea uh, text to them. Yes. Thanks to technology, you can always get, uh, pay online and then we Korea to them. Wow. Okay. That's, that's, that's fascinating. That's, that's a nice option too. That's pretty cool. I might, I might have to consider trying to commission some uh, Springbok artwork. Uh, I'll have to think about that one, <laughs> but, but you'll have to hold on to it for me till I get there. Cause I, I, next time I come to South Africa, because the shipping cost will be just outrageous. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. So um, we've gone over the hour, so I, I really appreciate your time, Dax. And um, we're actually peaking in a larger audience now. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if maybe I should uh, schedule this, as I said, for 6 p.m. instead of 5 p.m. for these features. But what would you like folks to know about art um, or maybe a little something about yourself? Because I think a lot of people, when they buy art, they really want to know something about the artists, you know, because because they show it, they have guests come over and go, yeah, this is this is from Dax. Dax is a Superman. He's from the Congo, and he told us this. You know, no. It's just, right? So, is there something about Dax that uh, you can share with us that uh, people might find interesting who would like to purchase your artwork? Well, um, what I can say in a nutshell is, uh, Dax Twala is a versatile artist. I cannot be conformed. I cannot. I cannot be put in a box. I cannot say I'm, I'm a portrait artist. I cannot say like I'm an abstract art, artist. Cannot say uh, like uh, I'm a wildlife artist because I can I can do anything across all spectrums. I can I can do a portrait fine if I find fine art portrait portrait. I can do abstract. I can do as as you saw three D behind me. I can do whatsoever. And um to 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 someone who wants to take up um, art as a career, well the advice is. Uh, it's good to practice. You're gonna learn on a daily basis, and, and there is no artist who's better than the other, right? And there's always gonna be criticism, and criticism does uh, does not uh, uh, should, should not weigh you down, but then it should uh, build you as an artist. And the art industry, um, it's all about it's all about it's all about getting your name out there time is as you are as you are known obviously your brain is gonna go out and thanks to this um um th thanks to technology i think nowadays it's way easier than back in the day to venture into a business of art because you, you don't need to go via galleries as is like a, back in the day i used to beg galleries they used to reject i used to get so many no's and yeses but right now i don't even uh think I will be going to a gallery anytime soon because it's easier to sell on my own than than via the gallery. So things have changed. Uh, technology is here. Let us embrace it. Let us, let us uh, use it. And yeah, you can always uh, look me up online. Um, yeah. Okay, that sounds great. Listen, there's two questions I really want to ask you before we go. And, and the first was when it comes to the paint itself uh do you just use standard paint i mean some people do use unusual sort of things or uh is it just paint you can purchase from a supply store or do you got some special you know colors and hues or such well with the with the with the uh, wild animals with the wild animals i like I like using acrylics like for for instance this particular particular one i did not do to you these are acrylics because acrylics are light they they they, they it's very easy to manipulate them. Understand? This is very easy to to, to they, they, they're light, they are bright, they 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 are out there. But then when I'm doing like pieces like the the, the musicians, that's a, that's that's an oil painting. And it has got like substance. It's very thick. Yes. Okay. Now, um, before I t ask the last question, Pinar van Vyck had said, "Hey, great advice, Dax. I really appreciate the advice that you offered to folks there." And then the, the last question I wanted to ask you before we head out is, um, and I've always been curious about this for people who paint. I imagine it's different for each person, but 
while you're painting, because you probably have some kind of image in mind of what you hope to accomplish on the canvas, but do you find yourself at times as you paint adjusting going, wait a second, I can take this in a different direction or, or maybe you make a mistake somewhere and say, oh, let me fix it by doing this. Do, do you ever change where you're going with your painting midstream? And does it, does it change the outcome? Yes. Uh, so many a time it does happen. And you're like, when you three quarters done, it's like, no, this thing is coming. It's not coming out the way it should be. Then you change. At the end of the day, when you're done, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be very frank with you. Most of the paintings that I said, I personally would not buy. I feel like I, I, those are mistakes. But funny enough, those are the kind of paintings that people go for. So I, it's, it's, it's a different ball game. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, you're, sounds, you're just gonna, you're it sounds like in your mind you're probably a perfectionist and you didn't quite get it just the way you wanted, but people appreciate it. So, no, that's good. There's nothing wrong with being a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not a bad trait, um, but uh, some people don't always do it that way, but I think it's a good trait. Uh, of course, uh, being in the military, we, uh, <laughs> we, we, we are perfectionists too. We don't want artillery to land in the wrong location. We don't want bombs to land in the wrong place, and we don't want to attack people who, uh, who have no reason to be attacked. So, so we, perf we like perfection too. So we got that. Now, Pinar from Vike says, uh, hates his own work. That's an artist for you. I think that's a good, that's a good line. <laughs> true, true, true. All right. Well, uh, Dax, Dax Tafwala, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. Um, would you be uh, willing to come back on the channel sometime in the future? We can uh, maybe things are a little bit better with art and, uh, and talk more about your, 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 your products. How's that? Anytime, anytime. All right, um, we'll do that sometime soon. All right, Dax, I'm going to ask you to uh, drop off the channel and because uh, I'm going to leave my camera on, so just uh, leave the meeting and um, and I'll call you back shortly after the stream, okay? All right, thanks a lot. He's just got to turn it off there. Leave the meeting. Okay. Uh, you, uh, got to leave. Uh, you got to you got to leave the meeting. You still got the camera on. <laughs> All right, but he's anyway still there. So um. Yeah, I don't, unfortunately, I don't, let me see. Um, there we go. I can remove him. Okay, there we go. All right, so, all right. <laughs> remove, okay. Remove, okay. It's not letting me remove my guest. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so you've got to leave the meeting, uh, Dax. I don't think Dax realizes that. Okay, folks, um, yeah, so let's just do this. Then I'll make myself super large. That'll take care of it. Right, um, oh, gosh. Software, you gotta love software. Sorry about that, folks. Um, let me get rid of the participants thing, um, and let me go full screen. There we go. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to uh, this uh, special uh, feature live stream today with Dax Tafala, who is an artist uh, from South Africa. And there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, now I'm by myself. Okay, I'll make it a little bit smaller. Uh, took a moment to get him out of there. Okay, there we go. So thank you so much for tuning into this special feature live stream with Dax Tafala. Uh, talking about art and uh, the challenges artists face under lockdown in South Africa in the midst of this pandemic. I uh, really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, I'm going to consider strongly uh, moving the stream to 6 p.m. South Africa time. That way people who've gone back to work now can actually get into the stream if they'd like. Anyway, so I'll think about that. But uh, I do have a uh, special feature coming up tomorrow. Uh, not confirmed yet, but that would be at 9 p.m. in South Africa and Botswana. And this would be Marlies, the Namibian young lady who rode her bicycle into a rugby goalpost. And you may be familiar with the viral video. We'll talk to her tomorrow, but still waiting for details and confirming that. And if it doesn't happen tomorrow, I'll, I'll let you know. But then on Wednesday, Nadine Hofert, the uh, famous and popular South African Afrikaans singer, will be on my channel. And we have Giselle on again on Friday. So thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate, appreciate those who were able to tune in. Um, it was an interesting discussion with Dax. Uh, really uh, found his uh, insights and his experiences quite fascinating. And you got to hand it to the young man. Uh, whatever you think about what people do in life, this guy took a risk. He took a real risk. He was he had a job. He was making money. Uh, it may not have been, been his dream job, but he was doing it. And he had a life as a panel beater. And he decided, I'm going to go paint. I'm going to be an artist. And I'm going to make it. And as he said, those first 18 months were very tough. Um, he had to give up his apartment because he uh, couldn't make his rent. That's a pretty tough situation, particularly when you're not, you're just starting out um, and you're a little further in life. So after 18 years as a panel beater, he took that risk and 18 months later, it began to pay off for him and he became successful as an artist and people were buying his work. Unfortunately, lockdown has caused him all kinds 
of uh, problems as it's done to pretty much everyone else in South Africa and it's directly affected his ability to make an income. So uh, if you're interested in his artwork, if you find it fascinating and you're curious, you might want to buy a piece or something like that, uh, look at the information in the video below, the, how to contact him, and I'll put more information in there as soon as I get that information from DAX about places, as, lo as well as uh, the organization that Mr. Delamini is working on there with uh, art for other artists in South Africa. And uh, Tercia, Tercia, thank you so much for sharing that bit of information about that Facebook group. We'll check it out. Really appreciate folks tuning in. I will go ahead and do a um, Stray Voltage live stream later today just to touch base with folks and see what's going on and bring you some updates on the news here from the U.S. But thank you for tuning in. Also, by that time, I should have confirmation about my uh, guest this week. Thank you for watching in Daba Africa. This is Chris from Central Pennsylvania wishing you all the very best, and I'll catch you in a few hours back here on Indaba Africa on the Stray Voltage live stream.